complex module, right? It doesn't mean quasi covariant, right? Uh, okay, but well, what I mean is that it's the one you see that is also it is our X module of uh, finite time. Okay. This is what I, and then, uh, yes, I agree that the coherence uh, means that you have uh, an exact sequence like this, but actually what you I want mean, this. But to be safe, so you can do it. Anyway, for projective uh, and affine we uh, define uh, in many ways uh, given a scheme x uh, of x as the set of uh, isomorphic classes of line bundle or as the set of isomorphic classes of divisor, Cartier divisor, or the set of isomorphic classes of Bayes divisor if x is regular. And uh, uh, today, now we suppose that x is a curve. Just uh, uh, to um, uh, just to make a simple remark, an L is a line bundle. And I always suppose I, a line bundle up to isomorphism. And uh, so L will be O of D for some D. And uh, um, I would like to remark that so I have, uh, 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 I can associate uh, to D to be sum of Ni Pi, and I associate to it some degree of D, which is sum of Ni. And uh, this is independent on D. So because I know that I have a map from here to Z, so if L is equal to O of E prime, then D is, a, is a linearly equivalent to D prime, and degree of D is equal to degree of D prime. So that means that I can I can associate to every line bundle on a smooth projective curve a degree, a number, an integral number, <coughs> which is the degree. And uh, it is, uh, and of course, uh, degree, so let's say, degree of OX is zero. Second of all, uh, degree of L tensor M is equal to degree of L plus M uh, and the particular degree of L dual will be minus the degree of L. And another important observation is if H naught X L is different from zero, that, that means this is the global section of L. That means that, that there exists an effective divisor D such that degree of L is equal to, to no sorry, such that L is equal to O of D, and this means that degree of L is positive. And this is another important property of lines, of uh, degrees. Uh, degree of a, a line bundle is uh, positive as soon as L as section. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it is a little bit delicate to give an example of line bundle who is of degree zero and do not have section. That do exist. You should go to a curve of genus 2, uh, and uh, we should enter inside the theory through course in algebraic geometry. 
I cannot be. But there exists there exists line bundle of positive degree such that H0 line bundle L H0 XL So this is not equivalent to this. And uh, okay, I don't remember if I told you, but I will tell you now. The peak of P1 is equal to O of 1 Z, and also peak of Pn is O of 1 Z. And this is called the topological. Uh, the degree of O of 1 ok now we will see how this measure in some way uh, the complexity uh, of a uh, curve inside a uh, variety the second measure of complexity and then we will see ok just uh, a trailer for what after will happen in the follow <coughs> in the following here we are developing a theory of degrees for projective curves from object of projective curves and we will see that this is related uh, to degree uh, to essentially uh, to a line bundle on varieties when we see the variety the curve <coughs> inside the variety and then in the sequel uh, as uh, we say before, as uh, we did before, uh, uh, compact, giving compactified the divisor on number field, we will see that the degree, uh, that the theory of degree of a compactified divisor passes through a theory of compactified line bundle over a number field, and it will be possible to define arithmetic degree of line bundles, and we will see that this is a sort of analog of this. And this will be height. And height here will be this. So clearly defined in terms of geometry. So at the moment I still want to, to focus the attention on projective curves because here things are more clear, more visible. So uh, so we have line bundle. And we can uh, we can see what happens uh, for line bundle when we have two varieties, two schemes. Suppose that x and y are two schemes, and f is a morphism of this scheme. And we suppose that L is a line bundle. On y. And now we will see how to pull back this line bundle to x. And we will see that this, this needs uh, the definition of uh, line bundle as a cocycle. And then we will see how to pull back devices. This is what we will describe now. And there exists a, a slight difference of this. These are the, some very geometrically and easily and, uh, meaning. And this is easier to define. No, both are easier to define. But this is uh, uh, always defined and this is not always defined. So, we can suppose that L is given by Ui, Gij, with Gij with uh, a ui equals back of ai 
API. And since we suppose that everything is scheme and not play scheme and so on, we have uh, that UIJ is spec of uh, AIJ. The intersection of two affine scheme is a scheme. And GIJ is an element of AIJ <coughs> by, by definition of line bound. And then you have all your uh, all your uh, condition. Now we have uh, that f minus one of ui will be a open set of x because uh, x is continuous because f is continuous and so we can okay we, we, we can be strict and we can suppose that this is a union on of v i k k and uh, V i k is a fine. And then uh, uh, it's a little bit heavy, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We have also V i k intersection V j L is equal to spec of B I K J L. Okay? I'm just doing this. We have Y X. I have a open set which is a fine. I take this open set. I take the pre image of this open set and then I cover it by a fine substance. Just to say that in order to give the definition of I, I perhaps it was better to do it in this way in the convert. this, which is an open set in spec A, so that gives you also. that gives you a map from A to AIJ, this is the open set here, and then uh, you do the same construction I made here. 
here, you look to the brain image of AI, the brain image of AJ, you cover it by you cover it by a fine set that you can you are exactly in this situation. can check by exercise boring Right. 
again a map x to y and a divisor d on y. First case to be understood and uh, suppose that y, uh, d is a uh, A divisor is an effective divisor. So I will do some something which is not completely rigorous, but then we will say that in a rigorous way. So D, and suppose that uh, the variety is uh, is regular, but we don't need it. So since it's a Cartier divisor, it is defined by uh, it is a sub variety of card dimension one, perhaps with some structure. But it is a different set that why. Then we have x here, yeah. and we can look. Gray image of D. And the gray image of D is, it is essentially the pullback. This definition is essentially good, but uh, just to keep in mind, because it's, you see here, D is not, ju is not just a sub-variety. is a closed subspect scheme of codimension 1 with some structure. And if we take the gray image, we are just forgetting the structure. And another thing is, uh, so this is just to say that, uh, yes, this definition is not completely OK. Second thing is uh, that it can happen, it can happen that uh, I, I, I make a, a, a suppose that the image of x is like this. which at some point is tangent to our divisor. So tangent means that as soon as I go a little bit far, so you see the diff this is x, let's say. This is d1 and this is d2. d1 as intersect x in two points and d2 intersect x in one point but everybody knows that this point should be counted twice because as soon as I deform a little bit x, uh, d2 or x I will meet two points and this is here is the same if I just take the pre-image and forgetting this uh, this point this uh, this feature okay so you can think in your mind when uh, you think about uh, geometry of the problem that the, it is the pre-image. So it is the case. But in practical, uh, you need a rigorous definition. But uh, in good moment, things. And there is also another thing, and this cannot be solved. Is suppose. Uh, the image of x is entirely contained inside d. Yeah. For instance, x may be t. Uh, at this point, uh, you have no hope to define the pullback of d because the pullback of d is zero. And this will see that is not so. This problem uh, we cannot solve. Uh, but we 
can solve it by line math. This is the importance of line math. We can essentially say that line bundle are being introduced for this process. So, definition. Suppose that D and E and E and F of X is not contained in D or in the support of D, then D is given by covering F uh, UI F I and uh, And supposing suppose that D is effective, and uh, so I have a map. I can consider F minus one of U I, and it is an open set which I will call B I, and I have a map from gamma U I O X to gamma. Uh, di, oops, or x, or y, or x. So I will define, I will define uh, uh, f upper star of d to be the, the divisor bi, and uh, call this map uh, fi. No, by fi is not a nice. Sorry, too many apps, I'm sorry. Uh, HI, HI of FI. And you can check. I have a map if 
but defined before, which is this. Okay? These maps are defined before here. This map is just the restriction of the map from the divisor of y to p of y. So I have a map like this, and this diagram continues. And uh, so what you have to remember is this map always exists, but it's a map which is not very geometrical. This map is very geometrical, it's just taking the image of the divisor, the pre-image, the, the pre-image of the divisor, but it's not always defined. Does it have any structure? The uh, algebraic structure? Yeah, this Here, case. this one uh, is a subgroup. It has a group uh, is a, of divisors. Because uh, this, you see, uh, if you take two divisors which do not uh, contain. Uh, the sum will not contain. The sum they will not contain them because of the, you see, you have to work over the algebraic closed field because. Uh, This is the image. Uh, okay, over C it's quite easy because uh, you take no even uh, there is a point which do not is no, not either one. one. Then the intersect is a point which so the intersect so easy. So this is a subgroup. And then this is and, uh, uh, okay. Uh, Just take D 
prime. Equivalent to D, not containing. X and apply. The same one. Okay? This is the important trick. And I would like to remark the following thing. Given a homogeneous polynomial in n variable, 
uh, this and which is the Joachim polynomial, the intersection with the element homogeneous of the Bn is not n for every n. And this actually is a, a statement which is uh, essential, which is quite interesting because it's saying to us the following thing. Suppose that we are in this equation x inside the n, and then L is I of the star of of and positive. Okay? <coughs> and this is a closed <coughs> dimension. Then, it is important to remark is that first, for every P and Q in X, there exists P belong to H not X L such that D belongs to contains P and D do not contains Q. And it's exactly the same proof. It's, a, it's sufficient to remark that given two line given two points in Pn there exists an hypersurface key which contains the first and do not contain the second. You just write the equation. And in particular, H naught of X L is not zero. Okay? you say about the degree of this? I will not I will ask you for a number. I ask you so for uh, some property of number. Think about this. Said 
very ample. If there exists an embedding I of X in the N such that L uh, a wine bundle L L is equal to I after star for four of one. And L is said to be ample if if there exists n positive strictly positive such that L tensor n is very ample. Example exercise. You take my preferred curve <coughs> this curve, and uh, you know because when you did uh, the exercise of the last week that this curve is not a line, it's not even isomorphic to a line, and uh, you take a point P inside uh, C. C, and you consider O of P, of C of P, and you prove that this ample but not very ample. <coughs> uh, what is easy essentially is the proof I, of the exercise I gave last time is to prove that this is not very ample. The, 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 the exercise I gave last time was exactly to say it was exactly the second state. It is not very ample. And uh, now you have to prove that it's ample. And actually, uh, it is, I don't know if it is. I mean, No, it's not, no, like this it could be difficult, like this. So, uh, you can change P if necessary. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't say that for fixed P, this is very ample. Example, but uh, you can prove it, but uh, you need a little bit of, of work. But uh, I just say there exists a P for which it is very young. And uh, what uh, you need to do is uh, X, C is inside P and P2, and then the, it suffices to find a line which is a very which has an inflection point in one point of, of C. Okay, you can do it. This is sure that it works. Because if you have an inflection point, you will see that this line H Three times this point, a 
as a device, as a, as a brain device. And uh, this will be enough proof that uh, your three is the same three. And, uh, okay, this is an example just for who, for people who know a little bit of algebraic geometry, just to quote something to you. But I cannot define everything, it will take too much time. So you take x, a surface, p a point, and x tilde over x to blow up. E, the exceptional device. So E is a divisor, and uh, you have a map from E to this tilde, which is an inclusion, and you can look to O of E. So this is an effective line bundle and uh, uh, of course uh, you cannot take the pullback of E to E because E is contained in E okay but uh, you can consider I upper star of O of E so you see this is an effective divisor inside here it's a curve so P1. and I'm taking the pullback of this, this effective divisor to E itself. And I find that this, this is uh, E, I know that this is isomorphic to P1. If this is O of minus 1. And this is very important. 
because this tells you that as soon as the image is contained inside the device, so I cannot hope a theorem like the, the one I said before, like this one. So I said before, if you take something, before I say, as soon as something is contained, uh, is not contained in, a, in an effective divisor, I did the pullback of the effective divisor, and I take an aligned bundle whose degree is positive. You remember that? And you can say, oh, okay, but if it's contained, then perhaps I can work a little bit and obtain the same result. No. This is a counterexample, and this is the counterexample, so I think is the easiest counterexample to show and in algebra geometry, the section theory is there. But you cannot just hope that two effective of two an, a divisor and a variety intersect positively. You cannot make a intersection. In the geometric context, after all I say, you will say, but this is nothing. This is just a triviality. And actually, it is a triviality. It is a triviality. And the height theory in the arithmetic context, it will be a triviality once you translate everything in a proper ah, There is a theorem which is hard and will not theorem. That x like x be our right. And C So there exists a map which goes from Projective variety, projective curve. Then there exists for uh, I, uh, I will tell I will call it. Uh, for every P map from C to X, I will call it. HL of P will be the degree of P of the star of N. This is a definition. Each one, each time I have a map and a line bundle, I produce a number. And uh, I can consider the set on C uh, X and uh, Shall we call it X of C by the fish? A 
and I am not from peak x to hump x of c z. Which sends alignment of L to the map to the map which uh, P associate H L of P. You see what I what I want to say is each uh, each time I have a, a point, sorry, a map. From P from C to X, and a line bundle, I can produce a number. Okay? Just take the degree of P of the star of N. Now I consider the set of all the map from C to X. And this is called X of C. And now I can consider the set of maps from X of C to Z. Each time I have a map here, I want to produce a number. And this is a group. Okay? And I have a map from Picard of X to this group. And this map is a morphism of groups. And uh, mm, Second of all, uh, I have uh, that, uh, uh, yes, I have uh, that, uh, um, I have to reality. Suppose that you have a map from X to Y. This gives you a map from X of C y of c. Just say that p, I associate h composing with p. Okay? And uh, I don't know if I have done this time, but uh, you remarked that uh, I denoted it by p, and before I called it a point. Is this not, it was uh, a mistake but not really a mistake. Is, uh, you have to think it as a point, and then we will see why. And I have a map, and I have a H L. Call it this a of this H of P of h of p is equal h h of the star of l p. and this is true. I mean I, I don't need to prove this it's just the fact that h composed by p up the star of L is uh, H is P up the star of H up the star of P. Just check. And uh, um, let me see. Properties. So this theorem is about these properties of H or sorry? So you think the theorem theorem is these properties of H are the theorems or what? The theorem is everything here. Yeah, is the the theorem is a is a sort of uh, uh, properties uh, of H. Yeah? The properties of the map H? Yes. Which is essentially a, how do you say, a 
I, will re I am resuming what all the things I'm saying in that. Another property is if L is equal to O of D effective. And P is not contained in D, which this, this means that P of C is not contained in D. Then HL of P is positive or positive. And uh, uh, if L is ample, then HL of B is positive for everything. Why? Because I know that if it's degree, it's possible. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> that's all. That is the property, and there is another theorem which is. Which I will just say a few words about this because we are not going to use it, and it's difficult. This theorem is difficult and requires, uh, let's say, uh, quite uh, a lot of lectures in algebraic geometry. Could be also, uh, I mean, two series of lectures just to prove this. Is uh, suppose. I just say you can consider a set of P on X of C such that you take L up. HL of P is less or equal than some constant, fixed constant. Okay? Okay. I, I, I should quite cl clarify what that means, but this set is a compact set. Just to understand what I am saying, suppose that you consider in P2 maps from P1 to P2. You know that you consider this set, P2 of P1. that uh, you can find rational curves of arbitrarily big degree in P2. You can uh, find uh, a curve, uh, they will be similar, but anyway, you can find, so if you do not parametrically uh, fix the bound to degree, you will find uh, a, a curve, a rational curve of arbitrary uh, B to B. If you bound the degree, you 
fine. Uh, finitely many families. Of rational curves of boundary. Okay. They are given by subspaces. Uh, so you can restrict to, to just one degree. So you want to see all the conics. All the conics are parameterized by a, a projective space of dimension 5. So that means that uh, all the conics is a compact state. Now you look to rational curves of degree 3. So rational curves of degree 3 are curves in are contained in all the possible cubic, but the generic cubic is smooth, but there exists a, 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 a closed subset, which is the set of singular curves. Singular curves will be of genus Z. And this will be compact. And you can generalize to every degree. The rational curves will be always be a, rational, a, a compact set. But if you take all the rational curves, it is not compact. It's something which uh, varies infinitely many times. And this can be generalized to every projective variety. It is a very nice thing. And, uh, and okay. Now, I'm sorry, I should go much faster. I want to explain why I call hits of C a point, the uh, elements of C C points. And this will be the clear point. We will start from here next time. So the example is starting from something very easy, A1. A1 is spec of C of T. What is a point in A1? A point in A1 is an element. What is an element of C? You can say, but okay, but this depends on the coordinate. The writing in this way, I'm just choosing a coordinate. I could change the coordinate, and uh, this uh, will be another point. But if I say that a point of C is a amorphous from spec C to A1, If I say by definition, which is exactly the same thing here, I'm just giving a definition of points which do not depend on the coordinate. They say a point is by definition a morphism from spec C to A1. Okay? So, how I call the set of points, I call it A1 of C. And this is a set of morphisms from spec C to A1. Okay, but now, and you see, uh, now uh, if I have a, any, any variety, x a variety, I can say that x of C, the set of points of C is the set of morphisms from P spec of C to X as schemes, for of schemes. Okay? And uh, you see that this is very good because, as I said before, suppose that you have a map from X to Y, F, you will have a map F from X of C of sets from 
to y of c. Just compose. P goes to f composite with p. Okay? And everything you imagine, all the properties of points of our ID, will have the same, uh, will have a, these are points, so they behave as points. So once you say, you see this definition, it's very natural to say, okay, but why I take this state of C? I could take any scheme and give the same definition. So, let C be a scheme. And uh, for every P, for every X scheme, I define X of C to be the set of morphism from C to X. And these are called the C points of X. And, uh, uh, and uh, so the height theory, the geometric height theory, concerns C point of a variety. Given a variety, I have a theory of heights for C point when I fix a curve, or I can even take curves. So to study height theory of variety, geometric height theory of variety is the same as study curves inside this variety. Next time, once you see this definition, you essentially could say, okay, I don't need to come next time. Why? Because uh, what will be C next time? Spec OK, where OK is the ring of integer from a number here. So I essentially define the degree of a divisor, I need to work with line bundle. But what I will need? I will need to work with a line bundle with some, uh, uh, some additional data over C, over the embedding. And this will be what they are called Hermitian line bundle. So next time we will introduce the Hermitian line bundle, which plays the role of line bundle in, 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 in variety then. And instead of using X as a variety of, a, of a, a field, I need to use uh, schemes. And here it's, uh, it's not uh, possible to go away. So X would be a scheme over Z, over OK, a projective scheme over OK. And then the theory will go exactly as here once I have all the definitions. So I will not need to prove anything. And so the height theory is essentially the geometric height theory, also in the arithmetic context. Uh, next time I will finish all I wanted to do this lecture, just to say how late I am. Okay.